Uh, well, look, uh, Mr. Maguna, just t- tell us I- in your words, uh, what has happened to you that has led you to be in Amsterdam now? Well, you know, as you all are aware, I was abducted from my house last Friday by uh, people who did not identify themselves as the police. Um, they detonated a device uh, at the gate and at the front entrance of my house. Um, there were more than 30 heavily harmed uh, men. Um, they eventually took me away from my home. They did not advise me who they were. They did not say why they were taking me away from home or where they were taking me. They kept me in communicado detention uh, from that day up to yesterday evening when they took me to the airport and forced me to board a KLM flight to Amsterdam, to Toronto. So you were were Um, held in your own home? I was, no, they abducted me from my own home. And where did they, they, took where did they take you to? Lo- they took me to all manner of locations. They took me to at least six police, uh, police stations. The first station was Kiambu Police Station. The second one was Gidunguri Police Station. The third one was Lari Police Station. The fourth one was uh, Inland Container Depot uh, Police Station. Um, the fifth one uh, was now the airport, but in between they took me to Kajiado, uh, purporting that I was supposed to go there and answer charges. When the judge ordered them yesterday to take me to court in Nairobi, um, they they took me to the runway at Jomo Kenyatta International uh, Airport, uh, kept me there for more than five hours until the flight left. And did they tell you what charges they were planning to to lay against you? Well, at first they claimed that because I am the one who commissioned the oath of uh, Rael Odinga as the people's president on the 30th of January, they said I assisted Rael Odinga commit a capital offence, which is treason. But then, because they had kept me in communicado, I, I had no access to a lawyer, did not know what was happening. I told them I cannot take the plea. I cannot even sign their statement uh, because it was incomprehensible to me how, as a lawyer, commissioning an oath which I'm licensed to do, I had committed capital offense. So then they turned around and said, look, but you are also uh, a self-proclaimed member of, of an organized criminal group called NRM. Uh, I told them, well, (laughs) NRM is not an organized group. It's a movement. It's an idea. And NRM, the Ugandan organization, is the one you have banned, not NRM Kenya. And there is no proof that I'm a member. In any event, I'm not going to sign your charge. So then they turned around and uh, they said, oh, um, I was in Kenya illegally and I'm not a Kenyan. Um, and they deported me. Did they explain why they apparently changed their mind then, that they were not going to take you to court, they were going to deport you instead? You see, they knew that they are in violation of five court orders. Five times uh, the High Court has ordered that they take me to court. Uh, The last time was an habeas corpus, failing which they were found in contempt of court. Then they took me to a different jurisdiction, then that court also told them that they couldn't take me there. They had to take me to Nairobi. So finding themselves in multiple defiance of court orders and the court now ruling that they cannot even charge me in any place in the Republic of Kenya, uh, they, they ran out of options. They, they wanted to keep me. They wanted to continue to humiliate, degrade and torture me. Uh, but the court refused. So, and they, now the, the, it was proof that they had me, they couldn't deny it because they had produced me in a different uh, court at the border of Kenya and Tanzania. And uh, they decided the best thing to do is get rid of him. But unfortunately for them, the constitution is very clear. You cannot cancel citizenship of a person who gained his citizenship by birth. And I was born in Kenya. 
So what now? Okay. What now? You're heading to Canada. Do you then plan I'm to return? To Canada. I'm going to fight uh, this legally and constitutionally and politically. I've instructed lawyers to, to initiate applications and proceedings. One, to invalidate, to nullify what Fred Matiangi purportedly did in terms of deportation to reinstate my passport, which they took illegally from me, and uh, to allow me to be able to return to Kenya. I have a right, like any other Kenyan, to associate, to express myself, and to engage in any political activity which is lawful and peaceful. And that's what I've been doing. What is your view of what has happened to you? I've been treated uh, like a beast. Uh, in fact, I've been treated so badly in the six days, uh, no, five days that I was kept in incommunicado detention. I was only given food twice. I was not allowed to sleep. I was kept standing for more than 24 hours. And when I was able to sleep, I slept on bare cement cold floor without anything. I have not been able to take a shower since last Friday, even right now. And uh, my feet are swollen. Uh, there was a time I thought I was going to get uh, um, an attack of, uh, uh, what is it, pneumonia. I demanded to see a doctor. They refused. So, so I've, been, I've been tortured. I've been treated very badly. Uh, these guys do not respect the rule of law and the Constitution. And worst of all, they call themselves enforcement agencies, but they do not comply by court orders. So they are rogue. In fact, they told me they are rogue. Yes? You're heading to Canada. Do you think that the Canadian authorities should actually get involved with your case? Uh, of course. I mean, this is a, an egregious violation of human rights. And uh, Canada stands for nothing but, uh, you know, the highest standards of, of human rights and uh, the principles of constitutionalism. And mine have just been abrogated flagrantly for days on end, notwithstanding court orders. Mr. Maguna, thank you very much indeed, sir. Thank you.